Now for the advanced shapes, what I'm going to be showing you here is nothing really advanced. It's just basically working with advanced features to help us work with our shapes. And so I'll show you that in just a second. But what I want to do here is I want to create a dartboard with a bullseye in the center of it. So to help me center up some things, I'm going to be using some of the features here, alignment features. So let's go ahead and create first our board by, well, drawing a square. And I can do that by coming up here on the Home tab, going to the Drawing Group, click on Shapes, and to draw a square, I need to go ahead and select the rectangle. We learned about that in the previous training video, right? Go ahead and click on that, and then click and drag to draw your... Okay, if I held down the Shift key, it would pop open, and, well, that would be the perfect square, but uh, I'm going to leave it right about there. Now, to make this with the texture of a board and not the color blue, we can come up here to its Related Contextual Format tab, or, you know, since we're on the Home tab and it's got pretty much everything that I want to work with here in the Drawing Group, let's click on Shape Fill and stay here and go down to Texture. And we can do something nutty, like Walnut, but let's go with Oak and select that. And then you'll notice that my Oak has a light blue outline to it. So if I come up to Shape Outline, I say, No Outline. Okay, that's better. I don't see that light blue outline. You can click off of it see it's not there. Now we want to go ahead and add some circles, one smaller than the next, so we can get to the center or the bullseye and to add circles. Let's go ahead and with it selected, I can go, well, since we're on the Home tab, let's just go to the Drawing Group and add our shapes here. Click on that because, you know, I could go to the Format tab here and there are shapes that are available over in the insert shapes. Well, okay, I'm here. We'll do it here. Click on the more button. And so there's more than one way to find your shapes on different tabs. So click on oval and I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner of that little resizing handle and then click and drag down. And if I want a perfect circle, then I have to hold down the shift key and I'll go about like that and then let go. So there's one. Let's draw another circle and each one that I draw is going to be smaller than the previous one. So Let's come back up here, click on Oval, up here, click and drag, hold down the Shift key, and it's going to be smaller, okay, maybe there. Come back up here, and then click and drag, holding down the Shift key to get my perfect circle. Come back up here, select Oval, click and drag, hold down the Shift key, so you can see what I'm getting at here. And let's make the last one here, something, click and drag, a little bit smaller, and let go. Now when it comes to aligning these up because, well, that isn't centered or in the middle here, the alignment is I want some help from Microsoft because if I, you know, click and drag around, go, okay, they're centered and try to use that alignment. As you can see, the dashed lines to get it right in the center. Um, okay, yeah, that can work, but I got a lot that I'm working with. So instead of doing it that way, let's go ahead and select everything that we want aligned off of each other to be centered uh, vertically and horizontally. So to do that, you can do Control A and it selects everything on that slide. Or let me click off. You can select the board, hold down the shift key, and click on each circle. And then you want to come up here on the Format tab to go to the Arrange group. And you want to click on this guy right here, Align Objects. Click on it. And you want to center it first and then align it to the middle. So there's Center. And then click on it again and then go to the middle. Oh, isn't that perfect? Click off. That's a bullseye. Well, except I'd like a star in the middle of it. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's add a star. So come back up here to Shapes on the Home tab. Click on it. And there's a five-pointy thing. Click on that. And then click and drag a star. Now, if you want to keep it perfectly proportional, hold down the Shift key. And then you can push it in and let go. And if it's not aligned exactly right, well, you can click and drag and try to get it aligned in there. But you know what? If I hold down the Shift key and click on that inner circle, and I want to do the same thing, so let's see, Home tab. Remember, the alignment was on the Format tab, but since I'm on the Home tab, if I go to the Drawing group and click on Arrange, I have to go down to Find Align there, instead of on the Format tab where Align was right there when you can click on it. Microsoft does have their features in various places, and so we want to align to the center, and then click on Arrange again, because then when we align next, it's going to be to the middle. Click off. Cool. And then you can go ahead and color it. You know, okay, the star's got to be yellow. Or let's come up here, shape fill to yellow. And then you can color your circles here. I'm going to select the innermost circle, then the next one, then the outer one. And let's go ahead and do shape fill. Or you got quick styles here if you want to choose something there, but yeah, that's not me. 
Let's go ahead and do shape fill. And let's do something gradient. Oh, that's gradient. Let's go to more gradients here. And so when I select that, it opens up here, and it's going to solid fill. So I have to come over here and select gradient fill. And, oh, that looks pretty cool. So what it's doing down below with the gradient stops, it says start with white, and then go over and stop. And you can see when I hover over it, ice blue accent one, lighter 55%. And the next one is exact same thing. And then it goes over to lighter 70%. So would it really make a difference if I select one of these stops and deleted it? Just a little bit. If you rewind the video, it just jumped up just a little bit. So it does have that extra stop there, and you can hit undo if you see how it went darker. In any case, you can go with that, and you can say, well, I don't want it to stop at a lighter blue. I would like it to stop at, click on the drop-down arrow, and do red. Ooh, that's getting kind of kooky. Now that's the direction of the gradient. And you do have presets. The type that we're looking at is linear. You can do radial from the center out or rectangular if I do radial. Okay, see how that goes from basically the center out. But it's stopping pretty late when it transitions to red. And then it doesn't have much for the blues to work with. And you can change the direction. And so there's centered. You don't see much of it. It just kind of gives you a little light outline behind the star. And so you can really have a lot of fun playing with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo for the most part and go back to that lighter blue because that was cool and then how about if I select the other two dark blue circles that don't have a gradient applied to it and select gradient okay now I gotta have something different otherwise it doesn't look different so if I go ahead and select the first stop and say well you know what let's go ahead and just start with let's do blue solid blue and then when we get over here to the final stop let's see what happens when we choose red so dark blue then it transitions to a lighter blue, then it goes to red. But if I go ahead and select these and get rid of the in-betweeners, then you can see how it just doesn't transition from blue to lighter down to lighter red to dark red. It just goes from blue and right to red. But if you want some transition control where it doesn't transition so early or so late, then go ahead and say you want to add one, and then you can control that. See how it, oh, that's cool. So I get more blue before it transitions to the red. Oh, that's nice. So it looks like kind of a sunset. Oh, I'm pleased with myself. Except I'm not really keen on the light blue being outside of it now, being that light with what I've got going. But in any case, your flavor, you choose what you'd like. Let's go ahead and click off of it and close out of it. Let's go ahead and create arrows. Let's pretend that this is a presentation about our sales. How for 2016, we didn't hit quite the mark. In 2017, we hit it right on the bullseye. So if you want to go ahead and do something like that, let's add shapes or arrows. Come up here on the Home tab to the Drawing Group, click on Shapes, and we'll do an arrow. Then we'll just go ahead and see how we can focus when we're drawing on the inner circle or the star, how it selects that depending on what we have hovered over. But when I click and drag, there's that. And of course it needs to be thicker and all that other good stuff. So shape outline needs to be something thicker, weightier, and... Well, the blue's kind of blending too much, and the arrow's pointing in the opposite direction, but we know how to change that. Click on it from the previous training video, go down to arrows, and say flip, and so it turns. And then we need, let's see, outline, color, will red really pop? Uh, it does. How about purple? Is that, well, it's too dark. How about orange? Mm, maybe. Orange accent 6, darker 25%. Okay, I'm not feeling like an artiste right now, but you get the idea. So you can click and drag, move around, and let's go ahead and duplicate this. And in fact, before I do that, really, honestly, let's go ahead and choose light green, a little bit better. And then let's go ahead and do Control D to duplicate that, and then click and drag that guy down, and then take the tail end, that circle, the resizing handle, click and drag and turn it around, and then click and drag and point it right on the bullseye here. And then that's where we hit in 2016. Maybe we want to shrink it up because over to the right-hand side, I want to add what are called callouts, thought bubbles. I don't know, back in the 80s, when you got the newspaper, you'd, well, I would read the cartoon section, and you had the characters that when they talked, they had a little circle above them, and a little, well, funnel that went to their mouth to show you that, hey, they're talking, or they're thinking. So that can be found up here, shapes, and you can come down here to what's called a callout. See, that's where they're thinking, thought bubble, cloud. Let's go ahead and select this one, a speech bubble, oval. Select it. And then just go ahead and click and drag to create your oval speech bubble. And then you can grab that little teeny tiny pointer and drag them up so it points right to that arrow. And then you can just go ahead and say something like, just start typing. 
2016 sales hit enter not on target and we're just very frustrated with that and then you can go ahead and with it selected by clicking on the border control D to duplicate that and then you can click and drag and move that around and put it at the tail end of the other and then change that to well just you know delete it 2017 and then of course like any other shape you can you know right click on the border of it and get some options here shape fill to change it you can do gradients you can do pictures or something like that and you can select that come up here do your shape fills up there if you don't want to right click on it and select that and let me click off of it it's not the best that I've ever have put together as far as colors go but you get the point one last thing with all this put together if you want to move this around a bit or maybe we got a second slide we want to move that to or make a copy of it well when it comes to moving it gets kind of hard because when I click it oh that doesn't work I have to select all of them let me hit undo so you'd have to go ahead and you know control a to select all of them or if you only want to select parts click off and you know hold down the shift key and click all of those that you want to add in any case control a works for me now once you have them all there then you can go ahead and click and drag and move them around and then when you click off then you have to reselect all of them again to move all of them as a whole and that can be very annoying if you're going to be moving this around a lot so for me after I have them all selected you can in that selection if you hold your mouse still right click on it and go down and group them together so it sees it as one. Now if you can't right click and hold your mouse still, well then you want to come up here on the home tab to the drawing group and click on arrange and you got group there. So when you select group, well, when you click off and you click on like let's say the star, it selects everybody. Hey you pick on one, you pick on everybody. They're grouped together. And so you can go ahead and click and drag and move them around. But that doesn't mean that you can't select the star, you just have to click one more time and then you've got the star but does that mean you can click and drag and move the star around of course you can but the initial selection is going to be for the entire group makes it easier and then you can just focus on the star and maybe change the color the shape effects of the star give it a glow you know whatever you want to set up there for the individual selection you just have to click off once you select it selects everybody click again and you're targeted pun intended on that outer circle and then you can just change that accordingly because that's what's selected. Even though it looks like everything's selected, it's just focused on that because that outer box is dashed where we've got an additional selection inside that it's focused on. So whatever changes we make, it's just that focus selection there. And then wait a second, how about to ungroup it if you no longer want them grouped? To do that, you can just click off and right click, hold down the mouse, keep it still when you right click, and then go from group to ungroup or you know arrange to ungroup or if you're on the format tab you've got the group right there group to ungroup and then we're back to everybody being independent of one another so when you click off and you pick on one you actually are selecting one and not everybody thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos and for great specials on my products please see the description below this video